103, putting pets in stories. This is another, like romance, this is another element of the real world that helps people connect. Look at how many households have pets and pets are family. So you include those just like you would a secondary character that's a brother or sister or cousin that comes over a lot into your story. So they add realism, they add depth to the story. They can help move your plot along, especially if you're talking about a, a pet, uh, a dog who might bark in the middle of something that needs to be secret and outs the characters and creates a new uh, a chase. Uh, they can help uh, keep a character secure because they bark when something somebody's approaching. All kinds of good things where you can work in a pet and people love their pets. Uh, important safety tip, don't kill a pet. Uh, it worked for John Wick. Uh, he went on a, a murderous tirade because they killed his dog. Okay, we're, we're, we're good with that. But generally, don't, uh, don't do it. <laughs> uh, a realistic pet can add or reduce tension. No matter which genre you write, uh, somebody could need their dog to find solace after a traumatic event or just to help them feel better at, in the moment. Can you bring in the dog? They can cuddle the dog or the cat or the wombat, as it may be, whatever whatever you use. And then there are entire, entire stories wrapped around pets, Rin Tin Tin, Lassie, Scooby-Doo, all kinds of uh, stories where the, where the pet, where the animal is the main character and everybody else's supporting cast moves the plot forward. So pets, I, I think because so many people have them, it adds that relatable element to into your story, whether uh, whether family, individual, big city, small, uh, urban, or rural, doesn't matter. Everybody has pets. So, <clears throat> and, and uh, like I was talking about with the subplots, they can be more than just eye candy, uh, not just a dog's here or there, you hear a dog barking in the distance, but that the dog is, is integral to a subplot and they act and cause things to happen. This is all good stuff. So reality, that's uh, what you're shooting for, relatability. As people are reading your, your stories, hey, that could be me. Hey, that sounds like my dog, Max. That, uh, that's what he would do. <clears throat> Find the warmest spot in the house. Uh, sleeping on the dead body. That's more of a cat thing, not a dog thing. <clears throat> so that's it. Short, short episode today, but that's, that's uh, the realism the relatability this is what you're going for when you're writing when you're writing fiction you want a story that people can relate to that they that they can get into and adding those elements adding uh, smoky skies if you're in montana in the summer and, and wildfires adding the the uh the cold i i live in alaska cold is is, is a constant here but then animals too uh, animals move in and out of our lives as well as all those other things that we do. I put a lot of eating in my stories because people eat. Okay, that's just uh, part of it. <laughs> people relate to that. All right, everybody, that's it. Pets and stories, romance and stories, those kinds of things that will touch a reader, subplots, and keep your plot moving forward with the characters doing what the characters do. All right, everybody, you have a great